Hey, what's going on, Reason Gang? My name is MJ The Future. Thank you for joining me today. Today's video is going to be about Reason 10 and the different ways you can sample and deal with audio in this new version of Reason. So what I'm going to do is drag in a nice little audio sample that'll be in the vein of like a lo-fi track. And as you can see here, we have this audio track and we have plenty of audio to chop up. So what I'm going to do is just kind of browse through it, see if there's any good parts that I can isolate and then show you some of my processes. So what I want to do is turn my snap off so I can freely move these. And what I want to do is create a looping point. Now, in order to create an effective loop, you also want to make sure you have your tempo correct, especially when dealing with audio. So what I'm going to do is play this first from where the saxophone begins and tap the tempo. So it's in the 90s. Let's increase the size of this. Scroll down. We're going to try to go from transient to transient. Make sure our loop marker's on. Cool. So we got a loop range, right? Now we can kind of chop this up and use it how we want. So we use the slicer tool to get that first slice point and that last slicing point. Then what I can do is get rid of the extra fat, as I call it. I'll put our snap back on so I can get it started on an even bar. All right. And now with this sample, I want to force it to four bars. So what I'm going to do is hold the alt key and drag this in inward. So this should be an even four bar loop. <laughs> So now what I'm going to do is double click on this. This will give us our slice markers. If you don't like the timing of some of this, you can drag these transients over as if you wish. I don't wish to do that in this particular example because we want to handle the slicing with something else. All I want to do is right click on it. I'm going to go to bounce and we have a couple of options. We can bounce this clip of a longer song file to a shorter file and make that a new sample and then use that sample anywhere we want. Or we can go ahead and just bounce it to a Rex loop, which we can use in Dr. Octo Rex or Kong. So I'm going to do that, but I'm also going to convert it to just a sample because I want to show you what it used to be like <laughs> working in reason the old school way, the NNXT. Now I kind of tapped the tempo already and I conformed my sample to 90 beats per minute. But back in the day, what we do is we take an audio sample, put it into NNXT and of course it'll map across your keyboard. And what we would do to get different chops, we would then duplicate this and zone them. So what I'll do is duplicate zones, take this first zone, conform it to C3, and then take this other sample and conform it to D3. So I got one conformed to C3, one conformed to D3, and now I have two different chops, so to speak. Now on that second chop, what I can do is change its start time so I can have two different chops. And what you would do is you keep duplicating it, keep chart changing the start times. And then when it's all said and done, set it to one polyphony. So each chop cuts off the other. And it's a very smooth, organic chopping mechanism that you're probably more familiar with, with a lot of prolific hip hop producers who've used the MPC or the ASR 10. Um, however, the limitation of using samples in that way is that when we change the tempo, they fall apart. For instance, if you slow this all the way down after you record a sequence, it's not going to sound as good. So let's do a short sequence. Let's turn on our click and our pre, and I'll just show you better than I can tell you. And as you can see, when it loops, it just feels good. But if I change this tempo as it's playing, you're going to notice the big problem that we always have. The timing falls apart. Although this mode of each chop plays the rest of the sample is really convenient when you're blending the sample chops together. It's not very convenient when you change the timing of it because slowing down the tempo means the chop is longer, meaning more of the chop plays. Therefore, it doesn't blend into the next sample as well. So for that reason, we will always need things like time stretch and other mechanisms to help us. And reason implementing that into its sequencer is very useful. So maybe I'll keep this for now, but I just wanted to point that out for you, to you. Now, the next part is when we start working with this stuff, you might want to add drums. And I'm going to use a pretty well-known drum break, and we're going to chop it up and see what kind of options we have. So this is more or less the same as our previous workflow. The only difference is we're looking for drums. We'll go further down the line, and we'll take our snap off. Let's go ahead and turn that layer down. 
Cool, so we can see that loop there. Let's go ahead and minimize these different views. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Let's go ahead and tighten it up and let's see. So what I'm doing now is, now that I have this clip where the drum break actually is, instead of trying to crop it, what I can do is just freely move this around until I get the first kick of this particular pattern. And now we take our slice tool like we did prior. We got a nice little drum break going. And normally what I would do is of course time stretch it, map it to 90 beats per minute. But I'm not gonna do that this time because what I wanna do is actually chop this drum break up further and rearrange some of those loops. So what I'm gonna do is right click on it, bounce, and this time we're probably gonna create a Rex clip. So let me double click and do it from here. We'll do a Rex loop now that all the transients are represented and let's see what Rex looks like when we use that particular file. So Dr. OctoRex, if you haven't heard, now it's eight different modules in one. It's really cool because um, it gives you a lot of possibilities for juggling things and mixing percussion loops together. So I'm gonna drag that new Rex file that it created. Go ahead and let's arm it. <laughs> so <laughs> you have a whole lot of fun and of course you get eight different modules to have that much fun with. Or you could trigger it and it'll have its own play mode. I'm gonna disable enable loop playback and just play this loop that we chopped up earlier and see if I could come up with a short sequence to go along with that in terms of drums. Cool, so I like that first part. Let me duplicate it. And what I'm gonna do is join these particular clips together. And now what you could do is you could take each individual slice that you're using and then add individual filters per slice, which is really cool. And you can almost make the snare disappear by using the frequency here. And because their voices are layered on top of the kicks, I can filter the voices too. Now you have a whole different groove, a whole nother vibe. So the chops before sounded kind of wild and you're like, how would that ever make sense? But reason 10 is magic. So we ain't gotta worry about making sense out of anything. So the next thing is you probably wanna take this a little bit further and add some other elements. So I'm gonna show you one more trick that we can do with audio. I'm gonna jump into one of my kits that I made and grab a percussion loop. That was created on my SP404. It's kind of crunchy, but the hi-hats are still bright. So if we drag this into our project as an audio file, you're gonna see and notice right away, this is not a one or two bar loop. So of course we can adjust this by holding Alt and making it a full two bar loop. However, if it's two bars, it's too long. So I'm gonna hold the Alt key again on Mac, change this to one bar instead, and let's see what that sounds like. And that's usually cool. And I know a lot of us, we've experienced the sample packs and drum kits we have tons of those kind of loops. However, I always like to do something different with them. So what I went ahead and did was said, hey, why don't we just use it as a Rex loop, but trigger it with Kong. So I'm going to expand my Kong here. And what I'm going to do is browse for that sample that I converted to a Rex loop earlier. And what I could do is take each slice or something called a chunk of those slices of that hi-hat loop and map them across several Kongs. So let me go ahead and arm Kong so we can hear how it is at the particular moment. And what I can do is instead of copying and pasting or using multiple samples, I hit this magnifying glass here next to drum assignment and assign all of them to one. So now I technically have four slices. Now at this point, we also have some more, I guess, trigger types. So I'm gonna hit the magnifying glass here and I'm probably gonna experiment with um, chunk trig and I'm gonna expand this so we can see what happens when we do that. So pad one, chunk trig, pad two, pad three, and pad four. I set them all to number two, which is chunk trig. And now you can see like there's these zones happening. So what I can do is move these zones around and make each pad something different. And there's really quick and intuitive setup that help you come up with your own patterns from these hi-hat loops or bongo loops or depending on your style of music, there's tons of possibilities. So now I can record something to my own liking instead of being confined to the loop, which should be a theme. With reason 10, you're not confined to the loop. 
Now it's my own thing, my own groove, and I can reuse that same hi-hat sample in my library multiple times across multiple beats and create different sequences very easily with reason. So that's a couple of different drum examples and loop examples. So I'm gonna add one more element to that, of course, and that's drums. And I'm gonna go ahead and assign a groove to it as well. And we can do that right under these lanes. And what I wanna do is set my groove to A1, go to groove, I'm gonna go to my groove templates under regroove patches. I usually reach for the MPC 60 on these solid beats. We can go as high or as low as you want, kind of experiment with these. I'm gonna start at 67 and here are my drum sound on that groove. So that sounds good on these particular drums. And what I wanna do is match that to what I did to those hi-hats. So I wanna send them both to group A1 where those grooves are. I wanna mute the sample for now, just so we can hear them working together. Let's bring our Octorex into the mix. Now everything's in the same pocket because we're using the same groove for this project. So all these samples and loops come from different eras, different times, different years, different vibes, and they all can play well together within reason, which makes it very, very powerful. I always have one last trick to show you guys. I'm gonna go to file. I wanna export this new loop that we created as an audio file. I wanna take this audio file that I just export it and I'm gonna import it back into our project. I'm gonna go ahead and solo this and let's play the loop that we just exported. And now that we have it like that, we can use that loop and change the tempo. Let's say I want it to slow down a little bit. Reason automatically time stretched it for us. So now that we have it on this audio track, I can add an effect to it, which you probably find very useful for this style of music. So the first thing I'm probably gonna do is put this retro transformer on it. Since I'm slowing it down a little bit, um, we're gonna add some artifacts to it and see if we can get that vibe. Sounding good. Now there's a lot of top end on that, so we might wanna cut some of that off with a filter. So I'm gonna use that M-Class Equalizer. But there's one thing missing, and that's some wobble. So I'm actually gonna add a delay to this, and I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but hopefully it does when I'm done. All right, so I turned the feedback all the way down, delay up just a touch, and I'm adjusting wobble. and it gives it that record feel. And then the last effect, of course, is going to be scream right after that. And then that's when we do our bit rate reduction and that's gonna be the selection digital. Let's turn that down a little bit. Let's increase the rate. Let's turn that damage control down. And you have instant lo-fi. And now that we have this clip, we can experiment with other tempos as well. And what's beautiful is you keep those effects and you can keep experimenting further. So if we start going into different lo-fi and chill vibes, they start getting closer to trap tempo. So now I, if I change my mind, I can then double time this and get a whole different aesthetic.
it's a whole lot of fun. I mean, you can just keep building on top of that, add some pianos. You know, Reason has a lot of great library instruments. I'm enjoying Parsec a whole lot, but that'll take a whole nother video to get to that point. But anyway, my name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining me today. Um, hopefully you learned a lot about how you can use samples and loops inside Reason 10 without needing anything third party, really. It's as simple as having drag and drop a few right clicks here and there, and then just unleash your creativity. Until next time, peace.